Are you sick of this Xbox yet? Too bad, bitch. It has been quite a journey. When you first saw this Xbox in January, it was completely dead. Since then, it was resurrected, modded, made a lot quieter, and had a fully digital HDMI mod installed for pristine video quality. For me, this resulted in the ultimate Xbox. I know a lot of people will disagree. Some people think that the noise and the blurry video quality is part of the nostalgia or aesthetic, but as far as I'm concerned, this was a dream come true. Except I do have to admit, the Xbox did not come away from that completely unscathed. There was a cooling issue that cropped up after the HDMI mod was installed, and while you might think that that's probably something to do with the quieter fan that I installed, it actually isn't. It has everything to do with the heat sinks. So you remember how I had to remove this heat sink bracket to solder the HDMI mod's ribbon cable to the board? The bracket is held in with these five plastic pegs, and my understanding was that the best way to remove them was basically to just yank them out. And I mean, it did work. However, for whatever reason, maybe because of the 20 year old plastic is brittle, pulling them out seems to have kind of smoothed the pegs over, which means they no longer properly clamp onto the board. But you can see here, I have all five pegs properly clamped in. I can even have one of the heat sinks locked in. But then as soon as I try to lock in the second heat sink, pop, one of the sides pops up and then try to push that down. Another side pops up. Push another one down, another side pops up. It's like the most annoying game of whack-a-mole ever. And even trying to push down all sides at once, basically no amount of pushing this down actually got it to lock into place. Obviously, the result of this is that the CPU and GPU are no longer making a good connection with the heatsink, meaning they are no longer getting properly cooled. Indeed, if left on, the Xbox would overheat and shut off, which sucked. Now, I wasn't really sure what to do about this. I tried using various things to kind of wedge the pegs into place so they wouldn't just pop back up, but nothing really seemed to work. I eventually considered 3D printing some new pegs. After all, they're a pretty simple shape and I've been wanting to learn how to model for 3D printing for a while now. I even drew up a little diagram with all the measurements that I would need to know. But then I realized these pegs are just holding the bracket to the board. They're effectively just a cheap version of a screw. So using my measurements, I determined what kind of screw width and length would be ideal for this sort of thing. And this is what I ended up with. I got two different types just in case. I knew the thicker ones should fit, but just in case they didn't, I got one level thinner too. I got those and some nylon washers to prevent the nuts from damaging the board. And the thicker screws did in fact fit, just as my measurements predicted. Here I am reapplying the heatsink grease because why not? And clamping down the heat sinks. Will it clamp in without any of the screws popping up? Well, probably, because that would be really weird for screws to do that. And here we go. Oh, except. <laughs> except I had the heatsink clamp in the wrong way. Excellent. Very good. How long does it take for me to figure that out? There we go. There we go. Nice. And they're clamped in, hell yeah. And I'm kind of happy with that as a solution for the broken pegs. I feel like, why not just do that? Well, here's potentially why not. At first, it didn't seem to fit back in the case when I tried to reinstall the board. This was very confusing to me for a while. Here you can see I'm struggling to sort of get the board to sit properly back in it. Originally, I assumed the screws were just too long, but after measuring, I realized, if anything, they should be shorter than the pegs. What ended up being the problem was these. You can see these four pegs here, 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 and here. They actually sit right where the pegs do that usually hold the bracket in. And I'm guessing that they're there to just kind of apply extra pressure to clamp the heat sinks down even more. But since these were way thicker than the pegs, they were getting in each other's way. Basically, it wasn't a length issue, it was a girth issue. At first I wondered if I would have to snip them off somehow, make modifications to the case, but actually that turned out not to be necessary. Here's a test fit I did that showed definitively that the nuts could actually fit as long as they were in the right places. So what I realized I could do was, because there's just a little bit of wiggle room in those screw holes, I could just, while they were loose, push them outwards towards the corner and then screw them in and keep them as far away from the center as possible. It then sat nicely inside of those uh, case ridges. Okay, so that was the heatsink fiasco. Thankfully, a fairly simple solution. It was a little intimidating for a while because I wasn't sure how much effort would be required to actually resolve this cleanly. But there were still some further modifications that I wanted to make from here. One was removing the DVD drive. We know from the first episode that it was broken anyway, and it also appears to be the last major noise-making component. It makes just a little whirring sound on startup, which 
would be nice to get rid of. It also weighs a fair bit and takes up a lot of space, but we couldn't remove it before because a regular Xbox will actually throw a fatal error if the DVD drive isn't present. Even if it's soft modded, the software doesn't actually get loaded until after the hardware is checked, so there's nothing you can do to stop it. But now that this Xbox is mod chipped, we can actually disable the DVD check at the kernel level and then ditch the DVD drive forever. Sort of. Most of you probably know that that iconic Xbox logo on the front is actually a part of the DVD drive, so unless we want a big gap in its place, we will need to salvage just that bit. But speaking of mod chips, did you know you can build your own with this video's sponsor, PCBWay? That's right, with their quick order services, all you have to do is upload the Gerbers for OpenZenium or any open source hardware board, and they'll get them printed and shipped to you quickly and affordably. I've used them for all my hardware projects so far, and the quality is fantastic, as is their service. They also offer board assembly, 3D printing, and CNC, making them a one-stop shop for all your prototyping and manufacturing needs. Go check them out at PCBWay.com. And now, back to the Xbox. I took the top off the DVD drive, which ended up not being necessary because you can actually just pop it off the tray at any time. It is a bitch to take off though, I will say. I was actually really struggling with this until I watched a YouTube video that told me that you just have to sort of pull up on it. There you go. Then I just used some double-sided tape and a lot of patience to very carefully stick it in the right place. The double-sided tape is actually surprisingly strong. It might not survive like punching it or whatever, but it's not like it's gonna run into that much trauma sitting on my shelf. Now, while I'm very happy with the alignment, it is just a millimeter or two too low because now it's attached to the bottom rather than floating in the middle, suspended by the DVD drive. Maybe in the future I could try using some thicker tape to get it up just that much higher, but for now I think I'm gonna leave it as is. Now, I also went to the effort of upgrading to the better SATA IDE adapter. Yes, those 45 to 50 seconds of boot time did start to get to me. And just as advertised, it does boot up instantly, so just another step to the ultimate Xbox, really. And I realized that because this new SATA adapter is a lot narrower, I might actually be able to use the 2.5 to 3.5 inch adapter that I bought months ago. The old adapter was much wider and pushed the SSD off to the side, making it fundamentally incompatible with this bracket. But now that this is nice and thin, it actually will, so we can mount this properly instead of using double-sided tape. And there it is mounted in the caddy, and isn't that just so much neater? I will admit I said in the second episode that the double-sided tape held on pretty well and wasn't going to move around. It didn't hold on very well, it did pop off. Probably because the hard drive is right above the power supply and CPU, so it was probably the heat got to the tape. Probably could have foreseen that coming, but hey, now it's fixed. Now, I did think about the possibility of maybe replacing these heatsinks with something bigger. After all, without that DVD drive, we now have way more space for cooling. However, I found that as far as air cooling went, the choices were kind of limited. The Xbox is fairly low profile, or I don't know, I guess you could call it narrow or short, a little manlet. And almost all cooling I found blew the air upwards towards the top of the case where on the Xbox, there is no ventilation. All the ventilation is out the back. What I would have loved is what's in my PC, which is the Cooler Master Hypo 212X or whatever, which blows air out the back of the case, but that would have been way too tall to fit inside an Xbox, and I couldn't find anything like that that was low profile. What I did find was a heatsink that was like the CPU one, but a lot bigger. In fact, it was designed to be passive so that, in theory, it wouldn't need a fan at all. I measured out the dimensions and found that it would have just fit, though it would have had to cover both the CPU and and GPU and I would have had to move these three capacitors. I probably could have just gotten away with like bending them over with their legs bent into the board. That sounds a lot dirtier than it is. <laughs> I think it would have been doable, but it would have been a lot of work. And eventually I just kind of decided that it was probably more work than it was worth. Shared between the CPU and GPU, I couldn't imagine that it would actually reduce temperatures that much. Like maybe I could have gotten the fan to run at 20% again instead of 40%, but it seemed like a lot more effort than it was worth. I think at this point, the best ways to actually improve temperatures on this Xbox would be to simply just run the fan faster and sacrifice a little bit of that quietness, or to go all in with liquid cooling. Now, liquid cooling would be very interesting, I won't lie, but it would also be a uh, load of effort. <laughs> Another thing someone mentioned was that the slightly high temperatures of the quieter fan could be because it doesn't fit as well. I showed off in its first appearance that it kind of wiggles in place. It doesn't create an airtight seal 
uh, with the rest of the case. And I could certainly believe that that would affect temperatures. I found even through my testing that not having the hard drive caddy in place over the CPU heatsink could raise temperatures as much as 10 degrees Celsius because blocking off the top just helps the fan that much more in sucking air through the heatsink. So I started looking at some foam gasket, eventually trying out this double-sided foam tape. It was, as you might expect, pretty fiddly, especially here when I had to trim it down to make sure it would actually fit. But it did seem to work. It did seem to, once it was all clicked in, form a pretty good seal with the rest of the case. Except I realized when I put the hard drive caddy back in that it was actually kind of pulling on it. Here, so you can kind of see that as I push down on the hard drive caddy, it kind of pulls on the fan to the point where even the metal case is now warping. And looking at it, I could kind of see there was this wedge that was just catching on the corner of the fan. Obviously, it probably wasn't good if the hard drive caddy itself was pulling the fan away from the outside and potentially messing up some of its airflow. I saw that some people simply cut one of the corners off, so I decided to do the same thing. Just cut the offending corner off the fan. After all, it's not like we're gonna need to screw anything into it anyway. Okay, so here's my trimmed down fan. Seal it back into place onto the tape. And you can see no longer is the hard drive caddy pulling on it. I put it all back together, did some temperature tests again, and how much difference does that make? None. Temperatures are still the same as before. Well, at least the fan is no longer sitting loose, but yeah, I think these are the temperatures we're stuck with now. So while there are improvements we could still potentially make, God knows modding could go on forever, I stand by the assessment that this is pretty much the ultimate Xbox, at least for me. Extremely quiet, extremely good picture, and no longer overheating after only 10 minutes or so. So I think this will be the last Xbox video for a while. Hope you guys have enjoyed this saga, and if you haven't, I hope you enjoy the fact that it's over. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Um, two, that game, see.